We are now going to return to our drainage network editor to look at hydraulic data. The first hydraulic value that we're going to look at, if I go to our pit tab, is going to be our cover, our grate RL mode and our grate level. Now, once again, it's a field that's active, but there's no values, which means that we're going to find its value on the defaults tab. So I'm going to look for defaults pit. So across the defaults, across to my pit tab, and you can see that my grate RL mode is set to the cover RL, which means I have to look to the line above to find out what it is, which is the finished surface. Now that's not the value that we're going to want to use. If I was to go back and add on our road strings, and if you recall, we set the center of our structure on the back of curb string. Now the back of curb is 150 millimeters higher than the invert of curb where our grade is found. So I definitely don't want to use our finished surface tin. So if I drop this down, I don't want the natural surface tin as well, but the set out string would be a good option. If I select the set out string and then link this structure to the invert string, then my levels would be correct. Another option I could do is I could link it to the set out string plus an offset. And this would be good if I was planning on linking it to my back of curb string. My back of curb string would allow me then to come down and to enter an offset of minus 150 milliliter millimeters. Now, it's up to you which one you use. However, if we do select the set out string, we may want to use the x, y coordinates and possibly z coordinate of that as well for our construction set out. So what it determines which string we use depends which value you plan on giving to your contractor to construct your pits. So let's stay with this one. We'll assume that we're going to give the contractor the back of curb elevation and the x, y point. We'll do that a bit later. And therefore, we are going to need this offset of 150 millimeters to get from that string level down to the grate level. The KU and KW values for our pits can be entered either directly or have 12D calculate them for you. Notice if we go to one of our pit tabs and we move down to the KU method, we're currently using the default method. Moving back to defaults, take a look at the default method is direct, which means we're going to use the value typed in to 12D. The other options that we have are to have the KU and KW values calculated from the charts or use the KU, KW from the charts but restrict them so the values must be greater than zero. KU, KW values less than zero are perfectly valid but some authorities will not allow this to happen and that's why we have this last option. So we're going to use KU, KW direct from the charts. Now if we're going to use the charts, 12D will automatically look at the flows through the pipes, the changes in diameters, the pit deflection angles, and the percent submerged. What we don't know is how the water is going to impact the side of the pit itself. And for that, we ask you to pick one of four settings, preferred, good, fair, or poor. Now to discuss these four settings, I'm going to jump over to our notes for our 12D training and talk about the four options. First of all, preferred. That's when the water goes directly across the pit to the opposite wall where it exits. Now this typically would happen what you see here where the water is coming directly down this line, going through the pit, exiting the opposite side. The next option is our good option where water impacts the side wall where it exits. Now, what would happen there is that if we constructed this pit carefully enough, we could have the water coming in here at an angle and directly hitting the outgoing pipe. Now, the important thing here is that it's not bouncing off the sidewall, but it's still impinging on the exit pipe. So that's what the both preferred and good have in column, common. Both of these, the jet from the pipe, impacts directly on to the exiting pipe. Now the change in angle is all taken care of for you automatically. We just need to know if these pipes are going to impact onto the opposite pipe. The next two settings, fair or poor, is when the water bounces off or impacts one of the walls of the pit before it exits through the end of the pit. 
if we come back here, if this one here was be reconfigured, so instead of the water hitting directly into this pit, it hit the side wall and then bounced off and exited, that would take it from the good down to the fair. Now the last option we talked about is the poor, and generally that will happen when you're close to 90 degrees, and the water will come straight across and impact into the opposite wall, practically come to a dead stop, turn and going out. And of course, this will be the worst possible case and generate the highest KU values. Now, often inside 12D, when you're picking this, you'll have to determine between a prefer preferred and a good. For example, in this case, we have 53 liters per second coming straight through, which would be considered the preferred. And we'll assume that this one coming in here at an angle is going to impact on the opposite wall. Well, if in that case, we'd have to say that that would be a good setting, and this is this is 313 liters per second. So, because the majority of the water coming into this pit is being generated by the good setting, that's the setting that we would choose for this inlet. The energy losses at your manhole are calculated by your KU times your V squared over 2G. The velocity is the exit velocity from the pit, and it's calculated as if the, if the pipe was flowing full. Now, you can add additional flow to this using the direct pit flow option. This direct pit flow is subject to the inlet capacity from the surface, but it gives you the capability to add additional flow directly to your manholes. We will now take a look at the pipe hydraulics inside 12D. First, every pipe has its choice of friction methods, whether it be Manning or Colebrook White. We give you this flexibility in case you have an open channel flow section of your network combined with closed conduits. Second of all, of course, you can specify your roughness for each and every pipe, and you can specify direct pipe flow. This direct pipe flow is not subject to the KU times V squared over 2G at the upstream end, and it is not, does not take into account the inlet capacities. It's a good way to put water directly into your system. Moving across now to our defaults and to our pipes tab, you can also notice that this is where we've got our default roughness and our default roughness type, and of course the default direct pipe flow. Back to the pipe tab, onto the design, you can specify your design mode. You can specify your freeboard limit, and if you're using depth in a pipe mode, you can specify the percentage of depth. Taking a look at the default tabs for those, it's down here at the bottom, and we can talk about the four different design modes. The first design mode is pressurized pipe with freeboard design. This method assumes the pipe is always 100% full, and it will upsize the pipe if the freeboard, sorry, if the hydraulic grade line gets within 0.3 of a meter of the grade level. Next, we've got our part full pipe. This will ask 12D to do gradually varied flow calculations in the pipe, also taking into account hydraulic jumps. At the upstream end of the pipe, if the water is less than critical depth, it will set the depth to critical depth. The idea being here is that with the turbulence in a pipe, supercritical flow through th flowing through the pit will return to critical flow as it exits the pits and rejoins the pipe. Down the next option you have is part full flow in the pipe, but it's depth that's going to determine the upsizing of the pipes. The depth that will determine the upsizing in the pipe is set by this value down below. The final option is open channel followed with freeboard design. This open channel method is almost identical to the part full pipe method, except that it does not look at the upstream end of the channel to check for the critical depth. In this way, if water is passing through a junction at supercritical flow, it will continue out at the supercritical flow depth. Next, we're going to move down to the outlet from our system. Use our drop down, and we're going to go to our head wall. And if you return to the pit tab, there's a whole new section of the pit tab that becomes active when you're on the outfall. You also can tell that you're on the outlet because you've got your circle indicating the pit, but there is no arrow indicating the pipe. First of all, the tailwater mode, you have three options, whether you go with minimum, 
of critical and normal depth, or you can select critical or normal, the most common selection being the minimum of the two. Because we do not know what you're ex exiting into, whether it's an existing pipe system or an open pond, we don't, we are not able to automatically calculate the K value for your outlet. So we're going to put in a K value of 1 here, indicating the velocity, one velocity head being lost at the exit. If you were coming into a T junction of another network, you probably want a much higher value. Tailwater conditions, you can have both a minor and a major tailwater level. If these water levels are higher than the level calculated over in this box, they will be used instead. This last line here for a detention basin design, you've got a choice of whether 12D will report, first of all, if you select discharge rate and put a rate in here, it will report back the storage requirements re needed to limit the discharge to this rate. The opposite choice is to, is to put in a storage volume and then 12D will give you an estimate of what the discharge can be reduced to if you have the storage volume available in the basin. We are now going to return to our storm analysis, but this time focus on the hydraulics results. Selecting storm analysis, we're going to turn on an extra tick box here. We're going to say that we want to modify our pipe inverts and also to modify our pipe sizes. As soon as we select modify pipe sizes, the box becomes active to specify the pipe sizes. We're going to go click on this folder, go down into our library, and pull up these metric pipe sizes. If I want to check the metric pipe sizes available, I'll select that folder and go down to open. This brings up the customized editor for working with the pipe sizes. If I don't want to allow 300 size pipes, I can turn them off. Right now, the largest pipe that'll be used is a 600. I can increase these sizes if I want. And if I move farther down here, you'll see that we'll have some box culverts. And if I want to be able to use box culverts in my design, then I'll have to come down and turn on these tick boxes. So I'm going to tell it that it's okay to use 375 high box culverts, but not let it use the 450s. Finally, farther down the list, we could be put some top widths in if we wanted, but we'll save that to later. We'll select right to write that out, finish that, and then we're ready to design. This tick box over here that says only allow pipe sizes to increase would be a good option if you had an existing system and you wanted to increase the pipe sizes to see if that if there were some places of improvement. However, I don't think you'd recommend pulling a pipe out of the ground to make it smaller. All right then, we're ready to do these. This time also, I'm going to turn on our long section results. And in our long sections, I'm going to go to our library and select the drainage. Oops, sorry about that. Select the drainage long design. The drainage long design will essentially create a long section drawing with each pipe end to end. Selecting run on that, it says that the model's been updated successfully, and you'll notice this time there was no warnings about the hydraulics. That's because the pipes have been resized to prevent the surcharging. Now, we're going to move that out of the way, and let's go take our long, look at our long section to see what's changed. You first of all, you'll notice is that the hydraulic grade line has come down and much closer to the pipe itself, and that's because the pipes have been upsized. If you want to take a look at these new sizes, let's return to our plan view. Let's turn off all of our road strings so it's a little easier to see our drainage network. And you'll notice that it's 375s at the upstream, but we've got some 450s on the northern side of the road. When the pipes come back together, it's a 450 down on the southern end, and then a 450, and then down at the very end, still a 450. So we've got some upsized pipes down below.